Tino, we don't see many machines like this in the marketplace. Tell me more about this Starmer. This Starmer is an empty machine, which is a mill turning machine. So we have a combination between milling spindles and turning spindles. In this case, we have a twin machine, which means that we have two milling spindles and two turning spindles in the bottom. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to, in my own head, explore where this machine would fit. Who would buy this, to, this sort of technology? This sort of technology is um, located in the automotive, but also for tool suppliers. Uh, the benefit of the machine is that we have uh, two different kind of operation, milling and turning, um, possible in one machine, in one setup. So um, if you divide the, the process, probably you have to have four OPs, means that you have to um, locate the part several times. In that, ca in that case, you can finish the part uh, in two locations only. And with it being a very fast machine, often with fast machines, they're only good for cutting aluminium. That, that's not the case with this, is it? Uh, no, that's not true. It's not only de uh, developed for aluminium or for light material. Um, this one, what we can see here, is the 31, which is the smallest model, but the same one is going up to an 838, um, and then we can have an HSK 100 and 65 kilowatt on the milling spindles. Okay, so you're then going in leaps and bounds into harder materials, challenging parts. Absolutely, we are going in uh, cast iron, um, very tough and uh, strength materials, yes, absolutely. Now, tell me a little bit about the automation on this, because there's a chessboard with some chess pieces. What's the intelligence between the robot and the machine? How, how does it work? Okay, the intention here for the AMB was that we are going to show something to the customer um, and, and to, to create a giveaway to the customer. And um, yeah, the chest is just simulating that a robot can play chess um, while the machine is producing. And all the time when we lose one um, piece of the chest, the machine automatically rebuilds the missing part. So we are showing also a chaotic manufacturing of the, of the parts. So it could be making any part at any time, depending on which one has, has gone, uh, has lost. Absolutely. So it's not uh, that we have to manufacture all the time the same part, but it uh, can be individual and uh, different parts in one setup. So the communication between the FANUP robot and the Starman machine is second to none, really. And this is our big benefit. As you can see, we have still a FANUP robot here, but uh, the cell is called, our automation cell is called a Stark, which means it's Starmas standard automatic cell. We spoke a minute ago about the power. What about the speed of this machine? How, I said it was fast, but is it? Yeah, we have um, 75 meters as a maximum speed travel of the axis. Is it a linear machine? No, it's not a linear machine. It's um, it's a normal machine. It's not a linear machine. And, uh, it's quite yeah. quick for a, a ball screw. It is. It is quick for a ball screw. You're absolutely right. And in fact, we have real turning spindle on that machine, which are going up to 4,200 RPMs. OK, what about your milling, spin your milling speed? Milling speed can be 10,000, but can be increased on the smaller machine up to 16,000. And then with the tool changer, if, you, if you're doing uh, complex parts, you need a little tools, is it expandable? It is expandable, even with a rack on the rear side, so we can extend to 200, 300 and 400 tools for the machine. And you don't have to have this machine with the automation, do you? You could buy it as a standalone twin spindle milling and turning machine. Um, yeah, you can have that as a, as a single machine, but uh, normally, it, because it's a high productivity machine, it makes absolutely sense to put an automation in front of the machine. Fascinating. Thanks, Tina. You're welcome.